Hello, Jens. How are you? Hello, Theo. <laughs> I just, uh, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Uh, how are you? I'm very well. Great. Very well. Yeah. I, I was, I'm a little late. So uh, one minute uh, too late. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. We I, I just, did the webinar. I completely, I we completely did the webinar. Forgot. We, end, we finished the webinar now. We talked about the NFT. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay. And uh, um, how, how was it released? <laughs> Now we are waiting. You are the expert. We were waiting for you to. Oh, uh, me! Oh, what yeah, happened? Sure. <laughs> yeah, well, I was in fact I I, I checked and, and prepared everything, and then I was about to 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 uh, enter the event here, and I just realized that I haven't uh, yet opened my um uh my my presentation. So okay. <laughs> it's, probably, it's probably something we need um in the yes in the yes <laughs> that's true. So. We are excited to hear you today to explain us about the non-fund payrolls and see what's what we are looking for next, right? Yeah. What what can we make out of this? I mean, it's a weaker than expected. Um, yeah. so more likely that the Fed is uh, dovish, but initially we were flushing lower because yeah. of what? I don't know. Employment employment rates lower than expected. Yeah. To be honest, I'm just looking forward now to see the pound to just skyrocket because yesterday they uh, raised the interest rates and the pound didn't move obviously market waiting for the non-farm payrolls and from today i think we're going to see a um, a strong pound at least today next week well, we'll oh, i see. just i just um i just see here so uh euro usd is back at 110 so yep. almost yeah yeah oh yeah, yeah here Gold back above 1,940. So, well, yeah, probably mo most likely market participants interpret this as dovish. So, equity is long. So, just yes, uh... yes, it did. So, okay, all right. I wish so, you good so, luck. Oh, nice, have a nice I, uh, weekend. I have as to well. share my screen. So, yep, also, yeah, we won't hear each other next week. So, next week, uh, it's two times it's Paul, uh, Paul slot. Okay, I'll be on vacation. So okay, uh, enjoy I'm, the vacation then. <laughs> I'm I'm going camping with my with my son. So let's uh, let's see how this plays out. If this is the if this is the last time we see each other, it was nice <laughs> to to talk to you. I don't think so. <laughs> don't worry. Okay, man. I wish you uh, to enjoy your holidays, of course, and uh, good luck with the webinar. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Thanks too. See you. Bye bye. So, um, hello, and uh, I welcome you to today's uh, Trading Spotlight webinar here together with Admirals. It's uh, Friday, the 4th of August, 2023. And uh, as usual, on the first, um, um, on the first of, of um, each first Friday of each month, um, we have the non-farm payrolls and uh, we'll cover them. We'll uh, take a look at them in life, uh, in, in, in event, via potential live setups what we can make out of this um in fact well they came in slightly worse than expected could well i i would be honest i'm i, I would say that's a surprise given that, that the adp numbers came in better than expected but this is the same as one month ago when numbers came in uh significantly better around the adp and then uh, we also saw a disappointing nfp print so disappointing in line print that's probably a better way to put it and what's even more interesting is certainly that the Fed last week on Wednesday told us that um, she is looking for um, the incoming data now, um, and then we'll decide what the monetary policy path will look like. Well, and uh, weaker weaker data, so if we can really call this weaker data, um, it's more likely to uh, give um, the Fed more room to be more dovish, not hike continue to hike um, rates further probably potentially looking into cutting rates into the beginning of uh, next year um 2024 and um so i think this is something we can now see so with euro usd now i'm um, spiking higher gold um also spiking higher and potentially also equities being a bit which is interesting i think equities are interesting um and here especially we have to cherry pick once again and i think amazon is a very interesting um, 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 pick today, given uh, the very strong numbers yesterday. So way better than Apple, I think. Oh, Apple wasn't bad, but Apple wasn't um, as strong as Amazon. 
um, there was a slight downtick in terms of revenue, iPhone revenue. I think that was a disappointment and we've run quite a bit, let's say, over the course of the last month. So um, the same is true for, for Amazon, but Amazon's gapping higher and potentially qualifying for uh, an opening drive play at least. And uh, that's probably a very interesting um, I'm, I'm, I'm stock to, to, to look at. But before we start and I continue talking, um, first of all, let's have a look here at the risk disclaimer. Go into some uh, um, a theory behind employment numbers, look at the numbers, and then look into the charts. So that's the, the path we will follow. First of all, the risk disclaimer, very important to note that we are talking about leveraged products, um, CFDs here, and uh, these are not suitable for all investors. So um, please make sure that you understand all risks which are involved when trading. Contact the financial advisor. Um, 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 in addition to your to your own um, research, and then download the demo on um, AdmiralMarkets.com and see whether the trading product around or, or leverage products like CFDs suit your risk tolerance. Um, if you then agree and say yes, um, that's that's completely fine with me and uh, perfectly suits my my uh, risk profile. Then certainly you can also open a live account. All details here can be found on the website at mymarkets.com. Um, in addition to that, um, if I give any kind of um, game plan now or a setup something like that please make sure that you understand this is no financial advice whatsoever it's purely informative purely educational but it has no financial advice um um, um attached to it uh very very important um so some details around admirals i think you can check out all the details on the website we don't want to dig too deep into into this just remember when talking about admirals you're talking about one world and one broker and now we want to look into some theory and then take it from there look into the numbers interpret them and um, also look at the charts and see um what we can make of this out of this um based on or from a from a trading perspective so first of all um the theory um, first of all, the question, why are employment numbers of interest? So the confidence in the economy, respectively, in politics especially, potentially is good. Well, then you, get, you naturally see people willing to invest um, and you naturally see um, entrepreneurs or manufacturer um, increasing their uh, willingness to produce goods, um, which means you see an increase in orders in factories. We're focusing here on the manufacturing side. We're not focusing on the service side. Um, certainly, this is also something to, to look into if you if you think, well, we need to uh, market a product or um, there's a, um, 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 some growth um, outlook here, then certainly you will also see um, um, companies investing in their marketing efforts, um, services, and so on and so forth. It's the same idea, but we are focusing here on the manufacturing side because you can, I think that there's a, a closer relationship. It's, it's easier to understand, let's say, um, easier to grasp the concept. So you have um, um, confidence in, the, in politics. You see... Um, optimism you see increasing orders in factories well what does this mean well you have an increasing industrial production and what companies will do in the manufacturing side and um, or on the manufacturing side on this context is they will meet the higher demand through more investments and how do you invest more what's uh, the the most likely um, um, investment you will do well you need people who produce the goods so you are hiring more workers which means uh, that with the outlook, positive outlook on optimism and rising um, outlook for the overall economy, usually you see um, employment rates dropping while hired workers increase, um, which means that this is naturally then um, a positive sign for the overall economy. And certainly what you want to make sure is that you have the best guys available. And how do you make sure that you get the best guys? Well, money 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 counts in this case so you compensate them accordingly or better than your competition so that you have the best guys producing the best goods which you are then selling for an increasing demand to um, um a broader audience and that means certainly if you pay them more naturally what you will see is that you have an increase in average hourly wages so that means like you pay them more certainly um that means you pay them more which then will be shown, will be seen um, in the data which is released, which is also a sign 
of competitions um, among companies. And uh, so that means if you pay them higher income, it's not just that you're producing more goods, but certainly that the people in general um, on average have more money. The more money they have, well, the more they will consume. You get an increase in consumption and a higher propensity to consume. That's exactly what I was talking about. And what does this mean? Well, that means that they consume more, they buy more goods, and this is naturally resulting in a higher economic growth. So everyone wins, let's say, in this environment. Um, and in addition to that, since you have a strong demand and people having more money, well, certainly you know this as a company, and that's why the strong demand then will find um, or it will result naturally in higher prices because you can say, well, I produce more goods. There's a high demand. And even if I increase my, my, my prices, there's still a high demand, which is met with my products, which is great, which will then mean like prices rising, that inflation will see um, um, a pickup um, in the overall numbers. And this is then in a, in a classic world or in a, in a theoretical world, let's say, this is then the motivation for central banks to uh, calm down the overall economy and, 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 and make sure that you don't get to see an overheating of the overall um, 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 economy, that then the central bank hikes interest rates to avoid exactly that. And that means that this slows down, um, in this case, uh, investments, or respectively, um, companies in investing, producing more goods. And so this is then slowing down. And rather sooner than later, the whole process will reverse itself. And the other way around, this is exactly what I what I mean with and vice versa. So that's the theory behind this. Um, right now, certainly, we have to make sure that we understand, well, um, the reason for heating inflation and um, um, and and um the acceleration in inflation over the course of uh, um, the last, well, between, let's say between, not the last, but between 2020, late 2020, following the COVID pandemic, fiscal stimulus, monetary stimulus, um, and especially then the pickup in inflation. Well, that was, it wasn't because people um, were paid higher um, 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 salaries or that there was um, strong economic growth, but that was due to lockdowns, interruption of supply chains, and uh, naturally um, no orders being produced while there was uh, um, this incentive to stay at home that um, governments around the globe said, well, we are locking down um, cities where you have to stay at home because there's a virus and we think locking home, uh, locking down cities and, and, and making sure that no one goes out anymore will, um, um, will, will, will end the pandemic, which obviously is ridiculous, but leave it there. Um, but what you That is, if you if you pay incentives for the people to stay at home so that they um, don't go berserk and onto the streets and then say, well, what are the governments doing to us? Well, you pay the money. And there's now lots of money flowing around, which is um, not while well, 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 no goods are produced. And that's why you have more money chasing fewer goods, which means inflation uh, picks up. And this is what we got to see over the course of the last two years. Now, there's a clear downtrend in inflation. That's why also inflation numbers are obviously of interest for us. Um, and the coming down, the deceleration in terms of the inflation um, is, uh, how can I say? Well, um, driven mainly by commodity prices coming down, while Overall core inflation, so if you take out um, um, uh, fuel, for example, but also, um, um, uh, what's it called? Food food prices, food and energy. If you, if you take this out from inflation and get the core number, you still see it's elevated around, I think, 4.8% in the, in the US. Um, and so to bring down inflation again, you hike rates at, and very aggressively, as the Fed did, um, and now we're facing the economic headwinds. And the question is now, when will the cut loosen its, um, when will the Fed cut rates, respectively, loosen its monetary policy once again? Um, and that will be the case once the economic headwind is, uh, let's say, too strong, which could be seen in like 
employment numbers coming down, respectively employment rates going up in this case, because you can see that this is obviously given what I just um, went through with you here with this chain within this chain. Well, this is obviously the, the reverse. So employment rate goes up because people are, um, well, facing economic headwinds. Um, inflation is still high, so companies can't um, produce as profitable as they did before, so they can hire um, more people. In fact, they have to cut their workforces and, and, and fire people, which is usually driving employment rates higher. So that means if these numbers then um, cool down and come in weaker than expected, that makes it more likely that the Fed will lose in its monetary policy. And that's why the employment numbers are obviously one indication, not the only one. There's also inflation numbers, which we will release next week on um, Thursday. Uh, but also something like in the US, especially uh, the retail sales numbers, for example, playing an important role, but we focus on the employment numbers today. And what I do now is we want to go here over to the numbers. And uh, I just, let me just, by the way, check once here. Okay, that's very interesting. Okay. Um, Let's now have a look at the employment numbers. Um, you can you can here see um, um my tweet. It's um, I just realized when I when I ex uh, when I entered it, um I just realized uh, that, that it's in in German. So um, but I think it's self explaining. I think it's it's not that difficult. One second, by the way. Okay. Um, so we have one eighty seven against two hundred k expected. Um, so that's um below expectation. That's surprising. Uh, surprising because again. So here's I'm um, trading economics, and this is the non-farm payrolls. I want to go over to the ADP employment change. ADP came in already on Wednesday, significantly better than expected, with 320, 324 against 189. And that same pattern as one month earlier, where 228 was expected, and it came in at 497. It was reduced to the downside, but still nearly 100% better than the expectation with 455. And the interesting thing now is... Um, this is the same pattern once again we've seen one month earlier. And by the way, why do I say that? If I compare, this, this is something which um, um, trading economics offers here. Um, if I compare the ADP with the non-farm payrolls, you can see, well, unfortunately, here's the spike. This is the, let's call it COVID spike. So that's why it's a little difficult to see that. But usually you can say if ADP comes in better than expected, you usually expect NFPs to be better also and vice versa. Um, and so you, we are expecting numbers to, um, to be better, which is naturally something which means the Fed will keep rates at an elevated level longer than expected, especially after the rhetoric being used um, last week on, on Wednesday. And the other way around and that's exactly how we how we interpret this number respectively how we how we think about uh, the release already before the numbers were released so that's usually what you expect if it then comes out as expected in this case lower than expected but um, um, the reaction in the market like for example gold should be positive but in fact it's negative or us dollar should be um, um sold but now it's bought this is usually a sign um, which is very strong because obviously good numbers or in this case, bad numbers are not resulting in the sell-off of the underlying um, um, asset, in this case, US dollar, um, but in fact result in the opposite, which is usually a very strong indication that something's going on there, which is likely to yeah, probably continue um, um, if a trend now develops and something to, to uh, keep an eye on. But Right now, you will see it in a few seconds. The reaction is as expected, at least. Um, AQ is um, a German word is Arbeitslosenquote. So uh, we, we we Germans have funny names. So this is the unemployment rate. Um, and it's 3.5% against 3.6%. Uh, so lower than expected, which is usually a positive sign. The problem with the numbers in general is that some, well, especially after you went through something like COVID here, and you've seen the reports from the BLS, from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which which releases the numbers here from ADP, respectively. Um, 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 it's not from 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 um, no, the ADP is not released from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's here. You can see it there. Automatic data processing, um, but it's um, um, 
the non-farm payrolls which are released. You can you can see in the statements which are released going hand in hand with that and checking it out yourself. BLS dot org, I think is the number, or dot gov. I'm not sure. Whatever. Um, you can you can see that around COVID, they were um saying, well, numbers are most likely not correct um for this and that reason, and because we counted them, and you you know about the incentives I was talking about earlier, and the so-called PPPs, um, so the these 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 loans which were handed out to companies, um, and they were qualifying only if they kept people on their payrolls, even though we knew beforehand um that these people are obviously already fired. They are just take they. Are just on the payroll that they continue to be on the payroll uh because the the, the company um wants to make sure that they get millions in um, um um support from the government if you want um and and so this is this is um letting letting uh I'm thinking about these numbers as a little let's say um don't take these numbers for real they interest us as traders but i don't really think that they're um giving a realistic um, picture of how the overall economic situation respectively situation in the employment sector in the us um, presents itself so again 3.5 um, unemployment rate and here are the um um average hourly earnings month on month in this case 0.4 against 0.3 so this is interesting because this is like these two here they counter this release. So these numbers come in worse than expected. So the employment numbers are coming in at 187, expecting 200,000 less, and usually something which is pointing to a more dovish stance from the from the um, um, US Central Bank. While the unemployment rate and also the average hourly earnings, um, they point to a more restrictive stance because Unemployment rate is lower than expected, so more people in the workforce, even though there's some tricks involved in terms of participation rate and all that. And average hourly earnings coming in hotter than expected, um, which is like, okay, there's more money paid now from companies to people, and most likely they have more money they can spend, and this is usually a sign for a more positive outlook in general for the overall economy. So it's not straightforward let's say um but now we have to we have to look okay how is the market reacting to that and uh let's let's go through um every every market and i think right away so if um, um we are focusing here on the on the macro side um i want to say um i have a list of interesting assets before the event already um and uh if i'm looking at fx pairs for example we are looking now at euro usd but my favorite fx pair right now is some um, certainly dollar jpy and especially by the way let me just check this is interesting because we are right now coming into a key region and let's see how we how we are at there 142 um but i'm not really interested in euro usd when when it comes to fx to be honest um and in terms of um, um another lay let's say um um when it comes to us dollar i think uh, gold is very interesting and so we are just um looking here at euro usd um for the purpose of well it's the most traded um, um, currency pair but it's not that i that i um, um, i'm willing to to actively trade it so what can we see here so this is a 30 minute chart Here's, as you can see um there's now a bullish spike back above 110 um which why is that? Well, obviously the market is um, betting on the Fed coming on more dovish, which is usually bearish for the U.S. dollar, and that's that certainly something to 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 note here. Um, and this is exactly on a broad scale what we get to see. Even though I have to say, um, everything below here, one ten fifty around, um, I don't want to be long the euro USD right now. So we we are currently seeing this this um, bearishness in general that was um, initiated from the ECB around one week um, earlier that, that was one day after so last week on Thursday last week on Wednesday we had the Fed there was a bearish drive because um, um, the um, ECB was talking the same let's say playbook let's say as the Fed did um, um, an, um, a night earlier saying there's data dependency and so on and so forth hike rates by another 25 basis point now we will see will there further be rights or no blah 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 and then we make it depend on the incoming data which is usually interpreted especially after uh the recent numbers from Germany um okay well there's no further rate hikes because you can't um, afford to hike further in the um, um eurozone from the ECB because um Germany is just about to collapse from an economic perspective which is no big surprise so I'm located in Berlin in Germany so 
um, it's no big surprise. Everyone could have seen that coming, uh, that the overall policy um, our government is running right now will uh, lead to an economic meltdown, especially from an um, energy perspective. Everyone has, I think everyone could see that coming. Um, well, not everyone, probably the um, Social um, Democratic Party uh, and especially the Green Party, they couldn't have seen that coming, at least in their world. Um, this is uh, something which is not an option. There's always money um, um, they can spend. Okay, it's the money from other people, but still, it's always money. The only problem is if uh, people have no work anymore and don't have money anymore, well, then there's no money to be spent anymore. And this is exactly what they found out now, especially if companies um, shut down due to high energy prices, inflation raging, and they're saying, well, you know what? I can go wherever I want in the world, produce there, um, hire people there, and I don't need to stay in Germany, especially also not just from an energy perspective, from rising prices, but also, let's say, from a perspective of um, uh, the, the the bureaucracy, which which was which is ridiculous in Germany. Um, in addition to that, uh, there is um, um, the highest tax rates in the world. Um, social insurance, you can't fire your people if you if you hire someone, um, and this person turns out to be. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that, but it's a complete idiot. And, and you just like, well, I want to get rid of this person. You can't. You, it's really like you, you, you have to find really ways or you have to pay a lot of money to get rid of him. So find a deal with this person. Um, and um, so putting all this together, there's no real reason for companies to stay in Germany. If companies shut down, they fire people, right? So there's no more people. And uh, this is exactly what we get to see here. And the outlook is some um, horrendous for Germany as the biggest economy in the Eurozone. I mean, Let's wait and see how long Germany is still the biggest economy in the Eurozone. But if you if you look at how um, the Euro is structured, you know that the backbone of the Euro, the economic backbone of the Euro is the German economy. And that's it. And then there is um, a big gap. And sometime, somewhere, um, then you probably will find France coming with um, economic um, um, numbers. But all in all, it's uh, it's about Germany. And once Germany breaks, the euro breaks. That's the long thing short, in fact. Um, and this is, I think this is exactly what you could see here with this with this drop, because um, this is what the um, economy. Um, I, I'm sorry, the, the ECB told us in this case. Um, we sold. We found um, um, resistance here over the course of the last um, seven trading day or five trading days in this case. And um, so now. Market participants, I'm saying, well, probably uh, the US dollar is also not that strong and the Fed is likely to cut rates, which will reduce uh, the yield differential between Euro and the US. Um, and uh, this is now resulting in this push higher. So this is exactly what we get to see here, even though, again, I have to say, um, I, I don't want to be I don't want to be um, long. I don't want to be short um, of the euro in general, at least not from a short term trading perspective. Let's see how things play out if we make it back above 11050. If so. Um, I think there's a solid chance within the next days that we make it back above 111. But first of all, we need to clean um, this level on the upside. Below that, I don't, I'm not interested in, in the long engagements in the Euro USC. Um, but let's look at dollar JPY. Um, and there's some some interesting things happening, um, especially based on the Japanese um, um, central bank, the Bank of Japan. Um, very interesting. Oh, let me just check, by the way. It's interesting. Let me just check one second. Okay. Um, so you probably have heard about the yield curve control. Um, in Japan. And last week, uh, they um, reinforced that. There was some speculation that probably they will allow 10-year um, uh, um, yields to uh, fluctuate wider or more be more flexible in terms of um, um, the band they have around zero at 10 years at the yield curve. Um, so saying, well, plus 50 basis point, minus 50 basis point, and we are allowing um, um, yields um, in Japanese government bonds fluctuate um, um, within this range. And now there were certain um, um, occasions over the course of the last days um, that there were spikes up to and above um, 50 basis points. Plus 50 basis points, um, which is very 
problematic, in fact, because we know that the JPY, for example, is a um, carry trade vehicle. So that means um, you're usually borrowing JPY and then um, um, finance your your um, 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 riskier bets or yields um, 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 oriented bets and whatever currency or um, also equities. And um, so letting letting um, 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 yields fluctuate more is closer or it's kind of you can interpret it in terms of like it's the rate hike from the JPY uh, fr from the from the Bank of Japan. So um, and that being said, it's usually something which is not very positive for um, um, uh, dollar JPY it should result in a, in a drop lower. As you can see here, there were some spikes on the downside on the speculation. But what's interesting that we were bought back afterwards because we directly saw the Bank of Japan intervene. And there was also some uh, news. Let me just see whether I can find this. It was on Monday, I think. Let me just see because that I, that's a very, very um, uh, strange site, in fact, where I found it. It was Nippon.com. Um, I, I had to Google it myself because there was a mentioning in the um, in, in my in my Twitter feed. Let me just see if I if I can see that if I can find that. Monday was the thirty first, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. 31st, let me just see. Uh, let me just see, let me just see, let me just see. Yeah, there we go, that's good. One second. So that was a headline which was quite of interest for me, to be honest. So we have it here, enter it. So there we go. It's urgent. So it was the 31st of, of July. And you can see it here. BOJ conducts special bond buying operation first since February 22nd. And that being said, um, as you can see here, the move came as the benchmark yield on 10-year bonds surged to a nine-year high above 0.6%. So this is 50 basis points. And then in this case, it was 60 basis points. Um, at one stage on Monday, following the central bank's decision last week, one week earlier, um, from today, so last week on Friday, to allow it to rise past the 0.5% um, um, cap. So there was more flexibility to it, um, but market participants were using that um, and 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 um, um, saying, okay, let's let's see um, what what the what the Bank of Japan will deliver here. And as you can see, they intervened directly straight away in this special bond um, 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 bond buying operation, which means nothing more than, okay, don't bet against the um, Bank of Japan. Let's see whether how this plays out. I mean, betting against um, uh, central banks, they have uh, limited resources themselves. We remember the SNB. We remember the Bank of, of England. For example, um, SNB 2015, Euro Swiss Franc 120. We remember uh, Bank of England in 1992 and George Soros and its bet to break and finally breaking the Bank of England. Um, but long thing short, that was one main driver here on the upside now. And what's interesting now is uh, that due to numbers coming in below expectations, non-farm payrolls, and US dollar being sold because the market is expecting that the Fed will likely be more dovish, is resulting in a bearish move here um, on the downside. And now the question is, in fact, if we can hold this, this breakout level. So you don't want to be long um, right now, um, dollar JPY, but you can see this is a strong level of support. And if we can hold here and start to curl up again, and then probably what one can we say what, what's the moment we can say that that we are that we are not that not sellers are in control anymore? I would say once we break this trend line here. So let me just. How can I? How can I paint this? I want one second. Let me just probably do it that way. Um, so right now it's potentially too early. Let me but probably here do it that way. So I can I can paint a little and then you can see the picture. So let's say we we get some kind of support coming in here. You bounce. We hold, and then one day we will break higher from here. So that's probably also a level then to risk against if we get to see this price action and potentially interesting because longer term, I think being short JPY is not such a bad deal. And in addition to that, 
right now, the overall sentiment um, in the US dollar is very bearish, I think. Um, so given all the developments, also from a geopolitical um, standpoint, now with the BRICS um, 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 having their, their meeting, I think later this month, um, around the gold-backed currency. So it's like really that you have the feeling, okay, there's a there's certainly some things going on and there is kind of an attack um, on the US dollar, but the resulting um, embarrassedness is probably a little too much, at least of now. So I'm skeptical for the US dollar for the next, let's say five, six, seven years. Um, but right now, I think the overall sentiment is a little too bearish on the US dollar. Let's see whether we can hold that level. So again, you, you don't want to be long here and, and just buy and then hope, but you want to see clear sign that this level is holding. But if we hold and if we break this um, 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 short-term bearishness, I think then USD JPY could be an interesting play um, higher up to 145, probably even up to the 150s in the upcoming weeks to, to, uh, to two months. So that's that's my view on on dollar JPY. Uh, let's have a look on gold. Also, gold is um, now finding some some buyers. Um, still, I I don't want to be long gold right now because we are holding here within uh, this this range. Um, haven't found um, have found um, resistance around one thousand nine hundred and eighty five on the upside. So in fact, I think. Painting a bearish picture for gold uh, for for the U.S. dollar is usually painting a bullish picture for gold. So, um, given what I just said, five years from now, I think that we will um, trade significantly higher when it comes to gold. Um, and significantly doesn't mean we are trading to two thousand five hundred, but I'm talking about five thousand USD per ounce. Um, that's that's in fact what I expect to happen within the next five years. The reason for that is. Um, that I'm just looking at the past. Now, you might be surprised what I mean. Well, just look back the last 20 years um, and overlay what I what I um, recommend you doing. I haven't prepared this, but what I recommend you doing is do just the following. Go to trading economics, I think is a perfect source. Go to the United States, go to the interest rate. So this is the um, Fed. Go back to the last 25 years. You have several cycles with rate cuts, as you can see here. Go there and then overlay this with a chart going back to 2000 and then have a look at how gold performed, gold chart, daily chart, and, and then just um, um, zoom out. And as you will see, once the rate cut cycle started, gold already anticipated that and surged significantly higher, especially during the course of the rate cuts. And when I mean surged higher, I mean, on average, we are talking about a performance within the next five to six years after that of 150 to 180%, in fact. Well, 180% means like, this is like from 2000 multiplied by two. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, not multiplied by, by, by two, but um, by three. So that means from 2000 up to 6000. So minimum a double up within the next five years. And that's why I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm enormously bullish but this is an investment idea so this is something i keep an eye on um not just in terms of gold by the way so having gold in, in your in your in your safe or something like that well it doesn't pay a dividend so also interesting certainly um give admirals invest in uh, um, a closer look and their um your, your your opportunity here um, to to um, invest in physical stocks, real stocks, and here in mining stocks, that could be certainly something of interest for you, um, because this pays a dividend as as of now, due to the high cash flow, um, like um, um, Barrickle, for example. I'm not sure about Newman, in fact, but I know that get Barrickle is paying a dividend, if I'm not mistaken. It's not much, but it's more than nothing, um, and 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 certainly more than having than having gold as a well as a bar in your safe, even though also remember that there's more risks and wealth when buying a gold mining company, certainly, because it's like a leverage bet on gold and, and surging gold prices. Um, but long thing short, so this is, I'm, I'm, I'm looking into a bullish um, um, future for gold for the upcoming five to six years. But I have to say, um, I don't want to be long, at least of now, as long as we trade below 1,985. Um, I think we, we did one step now with breaking, exactly, with breaking higher here out of this range. So where's a um, quick flush lower, and then we break higher. And obviously we're right now holding this breakout above 
1940 but still um this is just a first step there's plenty of of resistance on the upside and i only want to be long gold for a push potential momentum drive quite quickly probably once we break above 1985 but as long as we hope below that i'm more neutral for gold even though the current reaction um speaks for itself so it seems as if the recent bearishness also driven by the strong adp data let's go here to a 50 minute chart and see there so the um, um that was on on wednesday 2 15 p.m german time so 1 1 p.m 1 15 p.m um london if i'm not mistaken so we, we we saw the the flush lower from here and then we started a leg lower and now this this leg lower is reversed because uh nfps did not um fall into the same category when it came to employment numbers but we're less or where we're weaker than expected instead of the better than expected um adp numbers so that's it on uh yeah that's it that's it on gold so currently neutral let's have let's put an alarm line probably here at, at 1985 1980 probably and then be reminded and then see how um the overall situation looks like and if we are about to potentially break about um, um 1985 and um so is there is there an asset um you want to um keep an eye on is there something um, of interest for you because now we we just had a look at fx and um and gold so probably equities what would you think about equities probably worth a deeper look i had a short play on um wednesday why why was i short i was short because oh 30 let's go to a 30 minute chart i was short because um we had a key level here from last week on thursday um that was a potential outside day um there was this the selling pressure I'm still, I don't know why, um, where it came from. Prob probably was because there were some rumors that the BOJ on the next morning um, would be more restrictive. Like, okay, leave more room in terms of like the fluctuation of 10-year of, of um, um, yields um, and then and, and more than 50 basis points, whatever. We certainly saw some kind of elevated volatility here. Um, but then we searched higher last week on Friday. And that was a strong sign. Um, and then we come in, there was this Fitch downgrading. You probably um, have seen that. So we're rolling over now in equities, by the way. So this is rolling over. Let's see. I mean, nothing of interest as of now, at least. So still sideways action. Let's see how things play out. Um, but there was this Fitch downgrading. And in fact, initially, I was like, not such a big deal to be honest so i was like i don't i don't think this is um causing any um kind of volatility or probably short-term volatility some um, people probably are reminded of uh, 2011 when s p cut at the same time uh um uh and, and downgraded um the us here and we saw a heavy sell-off um back then um and but the reaction itself was like it, it didn't it didn't um look the same in fact and so i remember that really well because i was i was trading actively during that time and uh that that just wasn't the same especially when looking at um, um fx at gold so gold there was no bullishness at all so usually you expect the us dollar to be punished for such a move and and gold surging nothing happened um and that was something where i was just like well i don't believe this um the the initial drive lower and um i was about once once the dax turned on wednesday i was like okay well i don't think um that this is going to last probably will even close green today and then there was selling hitting um once wall street opened and and we dropped and we tested this area here and um shortly before we broke lower I was saying, okay, well, you know what I want to see? I want to see a break lower. That's why I'm anticipating a break here with a feeler position. And I add to the position if we hold below. And that's exactly what we got to see here. So this is now, I was trading this on a, on a very low time frame, in fact, but you can see it here. So this is a 30 minute chart. There's the flush lower. We hold below. Here's my add. And then we saw the push lower. And I was something like 100 points ahead. I was able to to um, um, bring down my stop nearly to break even. In fact, it was um, it was break even if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I was like, okay, I think this is the start of something bigger because we were breaking below the lows from from Thursday, and then we were holding lower. That was very positive, 
And then I saw yesterday, um, um, Thursday morning, I saw this this push lower and was like, yep, that's good. Now I'm in the driver's seat. Let's see whether we hold below the lows from yesterday. Um, if we don't, I'm out. I think then we're, there's no further room on the downside. That was the plan. We come in and we don't break lower. There was an easy chance. There was there was an easy one. In fact, I think there was there was an easy um um, um way to for the bears to keep um uh their 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 hands on the wheel. Let's say, um they they didn't follow through. And so I took out the position here. It wasn't the best. Uh, it wasn't the worst. And we're the Apple Amazon earnings overnight. Um and right now, well, I have to be honest. I think given this this whole picture. This is still very bullish. So, like, I mean, just look at that—that that we are up nearly fifty percent from uh, from year to date, right here, um, and and we are consolidating, and we are like over time. This is like a correction over time. It's not a corrective move over price, and we see a sharper pull in and and retest of this trend line. I think this is this is very bullish, and there were no more than one chance to push prices lower. That was already beginning, I think, in, in June, um, when the Fed came out more restrictive and with their um, um, economic projections, and we, we squeezed higher, then we rolled over, and instead of, of making a lower um, high, um, we're pushing higher on um, CPI data coming in below expectations, 3%. So this is ultra bullish, and now we are very extended on the upside. And still, there's no real seller taking control. Um, and, and then we have this downgrading. Again, it's, oh, I, don't get me wrong, but it's only Fitch, okay? Um, and still, there's no fall through on the downside. I think this is this is really strong. This is really, really strong. You don't want to short this. I mean, I wanted to short it because there was a clear sign of selling now, building. But now, as of now, there's no further side, especially now with Amazon and the earnings um, crushing and Apple, well, disappointing to some extent, but then what's disappointing um, if you if you just um, um, fall short, slightly fall short of the iPhone revenue. Um, so numbers continue to be very strong. Earnings continue to be strong. We need a new impulse. We we need a need a clearer sign um, from the market, and probably um, we'll yeah we will get this probably in in in, in September. But um, till then, I wouldn't be surprised to see continuous choppiness at an elevated level, low volatility, and really um, us to have to 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 cherry pick the stocks we want to play. Then, um, but I don't want to be short. The, the Nasdaq, especially right now, I don't want to long, be long it either. So long, we can talk about once we once we break higher and hold above um, um, new yearly highs. Then I think we are we are good for for a push up to to all time highs. But right here, I think um, that's a correction over time. Time of indecision probably, and probably uh, I I I don't want to I don't want to be involved in this environment. I think this is just um, tying up too much uh, mental capital, to be honest. And then yeah. So that's it from my end. I hope you. I hope you enjoyed the uh, event. Um, I hope you take something out of it. It's probably um, here. Go to this last slide. Oh, I'm sorry. This this last slide. So if you want to contact Atmos, check out uh, these contact details here. Um, reach out. Ask your questions. Um, also, regarding the webinar, use the, the comment section below, but also um, probably um, 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 ask your questions to the Admiral's um, um, support desk so they can forward the questions to me, over to me, and then I will answer them. I'd be more than happy to do that. And now, happy trading. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Talk to you again in two weeks. Next week, I'll be on vacation. Um, so have a nice one. Have a, have a, have a um, lovely weekend. See you. Bye-bye.